What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover all things stocks, trading, and weekly options trades, mainly focusing on massive fail YOLO attempts on high growth meme stocks. But today we're going over one of the biggest and most disastrous failures in investment history, which caused billions of dollars in losses. If you haven't guessed it already, we're talking about short seller Jim Chanos' long-standing short position in Tesla. Jim Chanos is the founder and president of Kynikos Associates, a New York-based short-selling hedge fund with roughly $3 billion of assets under management. They try to profit by shorting stocks which they think are fraudulent or overvalued. Jim Chanos developed his reputation on Wall Street over the course of many decades. In the 1980s, he worked in a securities division of Deutsche Bank where he made a name for himself by successfully making sell recommendations on companies that ended up going bankrupt, including Baldwin Piano Company. In 1985, he started his short-selling hedge fund Kynikos Associates, which had some blockbuster early successes. In the early 2000s, he made his investors a $500 million profit by shorting energy company Enron. Enron then went bankrupt in 2001 following revelations that substantial parts of the company's profits were fraudulent. This high-profile short position turned Chanos into a legend on Wall Street. His firm was then able to raise billions of dollars from investors who thought he could repeat this success and identify more fraudulent companies to short. Unfortunately for Chanos and his investors, repeating such a spectacular success is easier said than done. Over the course of the next couple of decades, he started to gradually lose credibility as he made some bold predictions that turned out to be wrong. For example, in 2010, he said that China's real estate prices were in a bubble, calling it Dubai times 1000, referring to the real estate price bubble that developed in Dubai in the early 2000s, only to come crashing down in 2008. He thought China's government was artificially inflating real estate and new construction to prop up GDP growth, and he started aggressively shorting Chinese stocks in anticipation of the bubble bursting. He explains his rationale in this interview with Charlie Rose. But the fact of the matter is, the game has to keep going. They're on this treadmill to hell, as I call it, because so much of their GDP growth is construction. 50 to 60 percent of this country's GDP is construction. We've not seen that in terms of a major country, I think, in, in for a long time, if not a, it, at all. And so for them to get off of stopping construction, you'll see GDP growth go negative very quickly. That's not going to happen because in China, it's, as we say, it's all about making the number. People are rewarded at almost every level of government of making their economic growth numbers. The easiest way to do that is put up another building. So they're really hooked on this, on this, this sort of heroin of real estate development to keep the numbers going. It's not infrastructure. It's not airports, high-speed rail. There's some of that. And it's not exports. Exports have been stagnant now for a while. And it's not the consumer in China either despite what people believe. It is construction, real estate construction. While his explanation seems compelling, he turned out to be completely wrong. After his prediction, Chinese real estate prices continued to rise. And despite a pullback in prices in 2016, prices continued their trend upward and are now roughly 50% higher than when Jim Chano said it was a bubble. This was one of Chano's first high-profile investment mistakes, but far from his last. While Chano's almost certainly lost money shorting Chinese real estate-related stocks, these losses pale in comparison to his most high-profile investment. This investment was a multi-year short position on Tesla, which has cost him billions of dollars in losses, making it one of the most spectacular short-selling disasters in Wall Street history. He first started talking about Tesla in 2015 when the company was still unproven and had yet to release the Model 3. They were pretty much only selling the high price point Model S and therefore their 2015 vehicle deliveries of 50,000 paled in comparison to the legacy automakers like GM, which produced more than 3 million vehicles in the US that same year. The crux of his thesis was that at the end of the day, Tesla is an automotive company and should be valued as such. If anything, their low margins and high turnover among executives should give the company a valuation discount compared to legacy automakers. He explains his rationale for the Tesla short for the first time in this 2015 Bloomberg interview. Well, I think first of all, it, it's an overpriced car company. And, and one of the more interesting things about Tesla is now comparing it to other car companies. And um, in September, we think that BMW, which is a little company in Germany, <laughs> um, sold just about as many electric cars in the U.S. as Tesla did, about 2,000. The really? I, the I8 wow. and I8. See, do you even think wow. that? Yeah. No, I've been outside. I've actually dri driven the I8. Yeah. And but so, I, I but it doesn't even. I, Matt yeah. Miller. 
Do you think people are aware of that? You're a part I, of I do. Well, I, I think you have to look at it more as an I-3 story because the I-8, while it is an amazing car, uh, didn't sell nearly as many units as the I-3, which right. is a smaller and cheaper yep. uh, one. But no, I didn't know. Actually, uh, Jim told me in the green room and, and I was surprised. And in fact, and in fact BMW, uh, there are press reports that BMW is, is claiming that um, almost their entire fleet will be electric by 2025. Well, of course. So. What Tesla had is an innovation and a, and a head start in this market other companies are now catching up to. And they have to become a car manufacturer. And becoming a car manufacturer is a lot more difficult than becoming a high-tech darling. He talks about the BMW i8 as an upcoming competitor that will take share from Tesla. But this is not really the case. The BMW i8 isn't actually an electric car and is instead a plug-in hybrid that still runs on gas. Its MSRP of $147,000 is more than twice that of the Model S's $69,000 price tag. BMW actually recently ended production of the i8 because nobody wants a hybrid when you can just buy a Tesla instead. While Chainus was trying to make the point that legacy automakers will roll out their own EVs and crush Tesla's market share, he actually proved exactly the opposite. While Tesla was perfecting the battery technology and building out its automated manufacturing technology for the Model 3, legacy automakers had no real intention on making the switch to EVs. They instead paid lip service to sustainability in hybrid electric vehicles. When they did finally start making fully electric vehicles, they were ugly and low performance, coming nowhere close to the quality and sleek form factor of the Model 3. Within the next couple of years after Chanos initiated his short position, Tesla had a bit of a bumpy ride. They got their Nevada Gigafactory up and running, but they had some operational growing pains as they ramped up Model 3 production, their first true mass production vehicle. There were some setbacks along the way which caused delays, and Elon Musk himself said they were in production hell. In 2018, operational issues at the Gigafactory forced Tesla to repeatedly reduce its Model 3 delivery forecast. This was a low point for Tesla, and Jim Chanos used this as an opportunity to double down on his short position, accusing Elon Musk of overpromising and underdelivering. But Musk wasn't about to give up. As he describes in this CBS interview, he personally took charge of the Model 3 assembly line and spent all-nighters in the factory until production was finally on track. Realizing it needed an overhaul, Musk personally took over the Model 3 production line at the beginning of April. We're aiming for really extreme levels of precision uh, more than any other vehicle in the world. He says he has resorted to pulling all-nighters at the plant. When things get really intense, I don't have time to go home and shower or change, so I sleep here. I want to see, where is that? Oh, uh, yeah, so it's comfort. Um, I mean, it's pretty boring, a roll, really. Uh, um. <laughs> it's actually cold in here, too. After the production issues were hammered out, the Model 3 became a huge success. It received critical acclaim from industry experts, and sales went through the roof as its sub $40,000 price tag was now within the reach of the middle class America. With the high volume Model 3 in full scale production, Tesla's vehicle delivery number started increasing exponentially, as did their revenue and earnings. Despite the incredible gains they made with the Model 3 in 2018 and 2019, the stock was stuck in a sideways motion as investors were still unsure they could turn this revenue growth into consistent profits. But as it turns out, Tesla stock was just a spring building power before exploding higher. Chanos could have used this opportunity to cover his short position and walk away without any substantial losses. But instead, he doubled down on the position, saying the stock was overvalued and again hammering home his same old talking point that legacy automakers would come in and eat Tesla's lunch. The Model S is seven years old, and, and now the big boys are coming. And they're coming with sexy looking cars at the same price point with better features, faster cars, great styling. And so what was unique for Tesla is no longer unique. Okay, so this logic was obviously flawed as the legacy automakers have been dragging their feet regarding the shift to EVs. They didn't want to spend the capex required to build up EV capabilities or risk cannibalizing their own internal combustion engine cars. In response to Chanos' criticisms of Tesla, billionaire investor Chamath Palahapatiya said Jim Chanos only gets lucky with a short once a decade, like he did with Enron. But most of his shorts, including Tesla, end up being complete disasters for him. By the winter of 2019, Tesla stock has started exploding upward as retail investors started piling into the stock. From October 2019 to February 2020, it went up more than 250%. But when the pandemic hit, Chanos got a slight reprieve as the stock fell more than 50%. At the time, there was much uncertainty about the outlook for vehicle sales in general, and Tesla was forced to shut down its Fremont, California factory. Chanos thought the global recession brought on by the pandemic would be a disaster for Tesla, as they just recently started construction on new gigafactories in Germany and China. 
These new factories would increase their fixed cost base while at the same time their sales will plummet as consumers wouldn't have the money to buy their cars. We are still, we are still basically maximum short Tesla. It's still one of my favorite positions. Um, nothing's changed in my viewpoint here. Uh, this is a car company. It will lose money again this year. What I find fascinating about Tesla is that the 2021 estimates, which track the stock on the way up, are now being cut dramatically. I think Tony Sakanagi, who you know, cut his uh, 2021 adjusted EPS number yesterday from $18 to $11. As usual, Chanos got it completely wrong. While vehicle sales did plummet during the early months of the pandemic, they rebounded strongly as lockdown measures were gradually lifted. And specific to Tesla, their production ramped successfully, and despite the pandemic, they had a record year in 2020, with vehicle deliveries up almost 40% to 500,000, leading to record revenue and profitability. These positive developments, as well as greater retail participation in the market, have pushed Tesla's stock up more than 900% to $845 a share. This gives it a market cap of $800 billion, putting it ahead of tech giants like Facebook and Alibaba. Collectively, short sellers have lost tens of billions of dollars on Tesla, but Jim Chanos is probably the biggest loser of them all, having been max short Tesla since 2015. The only thing that saved him from being completely wiped out is that his funds have a limit that no one position can make up more than 5% of the fund's assets at any given time. Had it not been for this self-imposed restriction, he probably would have lost everything as Tesla stock has 18x in value since he shorted it. After his fund's disastrous performance in 2020, Chanos has decided to finally throw in the towel, but only partially. In this Bloomberg interview, he explains that while he still thinks Tesla is overvalued, he has lost too much money bidding against Elon Musk and has finally unwound part of his short position. You announced your Tesla short back in the fall of 2015, so this has been, what, a five-year saga. And all your shorts, I remember you're saying, are capped at 5%. Are you still max short on Tesla? No, we're not max short, only because there's not only, but we are still short. Um, but there's now so many other things to do, including in the EV space, that we found uh, we found lots of other things that are maybe even crazier than Tesla. Um, but we still do have a position, and, and uh, it's uh, it's been painful, clearly. But I will say, for the first four years of those five years, it was actually uh, not a bad short. It went sideways, while the market went up a lot. And uh, and so those are the kind of shorts in a bull market that you hope for, right? The market's going up, we're long the market, and our shorts are not going up. But uh, last 12 months, it's been a different different animal, as you know. Yes. And, uh, and the stock is up uh, five or six fold, and, uh, and we've had to risk manage it like anybody else. He says he unwound the position to short other, more questionable companies in the EV space and manage the fund's risk as Tesla has soared. These are convenient excuses, but it's more likely the result of his investors pressuring him to stop shorting Tesla so as to preserve what little capital they have left in the fund. But either way, for his own sake, we can all hope Jim Chanos finally unwinds the rest of his Tesla short position and goes back to finding actual frauds like Enron. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. If you like the content, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Also check us out on TikTok and get 4 free socks with Weeble, links in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.